He, Al doesn't know much about music, but he does know a lot about Cliff Richard and one other recording artist, which might surprise you. Can I guess? Go on. By artist? Yeah. You mean a single person, not a group or anything, yeah? Uh, he was in a group, but is probably more known now for his single work. Yeah. Or his solo work, rather. <clears throat> is that recent or in the Al era of the 80s? Uh, probably the 80s, yeah. No, who? Tell me. Lionel Richie. <laughs> wow. It's weird. It's just wait, weird. Wait, it's in my head. <laughs> wait, ready for it? Go on. Owl Night Long. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> That's the name of his autobiography. <laughs> it's gotta be. It's gotta be. Tell him. When he writes it, call it Owl Night Long. Or it's going to be... Um... Yeah, I'll try. there's many titles we could have for Al's autobiography. Al sing sick. on the ceiling? Yep. It's, it's, it, they write themselves. They write themselves. Welcome to the Conquistables. This week, the Conquistables relive the glory days in the Great American Bash 1989 making their way to one of the rings tonight straight from hell the great Mew and Taylor the total package Cameron Phillips and Bam Bam Phil Doyle only tonight on The Conquistables. But it's okay, because I can hear you two guys now. Yay. Hey. That's always good. My recorder didn't stop. That's always good. That's Flatter. always very good. Flapper didn't say anything in flattery. No more than usual. Now, can I just do a quick podcast rundown? We're all at our own houses, yes? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're not in a third party house, is that what you're trying to imply? No. No one's going to pop up and start talking randomly, gibberish. I'd... Well. Other than the three who are already in attendance. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. We're, we're not going to pop up as such, we're just here. Well, well yeah. Uh, aye. Speak for yourself, Jun. I may pop up during this podcast. Wink. Well, if you get the video camera on, you never know. Oh, yeah. It's also the first podcast where we've all got dogs. Yes, indeed. it is. How <laughs> weird is that? Yeah, yeah I know. How weird is Evie? Um, Evie We've is in her pen at the minute. Not, not dog. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, not, not, not cat is in her pen. Yes. So she's just, I think she's got to bed for the night, all going well. So. Oh, well. Um, have you seen the insanity that happened today? You have to narrow it down somewhat, Ewan. Yeah. Well, we'll put it this way David Arquette's challenging CM Punk to fight of his choice, either MMA or wrestling. Really? <laughs> yup. <laughs> what? <laughs> it is it is the quote. Um you'll see on Punk, if you want to fight, I'm ready, bro. Come on, any fucking time, whatever the hell he wants. How are we doing an octagon, a wrestling ring ratch, everything, let's go, we'll fight all over the city. I don't think CM Punk will have anything to do with that whatsoever. No. <laughs> <laughs> <Really> crazy. <laughs> no. This is this is David Arquette Deathmatch veteran, remember. Oof, yeah, that he... video was brutal though. Nearly yep. fucking died. Yeah. <laughs> Was it the nicest of? Uh... It's true. So, when are we getting signed for the AEW? Being that everyone seems to be doing that nowadays, we're going to be their official podcast. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, mm. get like a you know six it's figure the, sum for it or something. The, the greatest yeah. t- sh- the greatest t shirt making company ever existed since a couple of months ago. <laughs> well, yeah, pretty much because they haven't really done anything of announcing any kind of shows yet well that's well they announced their double or nothing which apparently is a press conference on wednesday for yeah which I think uh-huh. is be the kenny omega reveal yeah because he wasn't in the rumble no so it was a bit <laughs> like oh who, 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 which idiot thought they were gonna be the rumble i mean seriously come on there's all I, these idiots that think that like kenny if they had not they weren't gonna do the company i reckon he would have been no like if the whole all of the wrestling thing hadn't started the like only way he would go to no. WWE if he was in the same deal as Walter, we would never go to the main roster, and he would just kill people. Walter's, Walter's on a deal where he doesn't go to the main roster? Correct. Walter is strictly in NXT. Really? 
Well, NXT because UK. Because he is still <laughs> doing WXW. He's still in charge of all that jazz there. Right so it. that was the deal. He will never go to the main roster. He is strictly <laughs> NXT UK. Well, that's not that bad, though, is it? Yeah, that's all right. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, Walter's happy. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. He still gets because the exposure. basically he's got no interest in going to America. Fair play yeah. with him. Well, at some point they're going to have to, like, the whole thing about you're on NXT and then you go to WWF. If NXT is a separate brand, then you're going to have to have people who have been there for, like, well, 10 years. How many brands? Of... How many brands are there now? I feel like there's, like, eight different brands of WWE TV right oh, now. SmackDown, seem... Raw, 205 uh-huh. Live... NXT, NXT, UK, NXT UK, NXT India. Whenever they get that going up, uh, NXT Japan. Yeah. So, but, but each one, you like, you can't have like. I mean, yeah. At some point, if they want to move into the main roster or whatever, but like, well, how about your goal? Being, <laughs> being on NXT has to be like you know a goal in a, in and of itself. If that makes sense. Of course. Then you can have overbooked disasters like you know the whole Gargano Champa saga. It's not overbooked. It is. It is. You start, Phil. Come on. I love it. The whole thing's been brilliant. I, I find Shut it. Up. Well, I, I can. Right, there's, there's good bits of it. But um, I think just, that there have been you, 25 minute matches. When you are now friends with the guy who two months ago, three months ago, you were smacking his head off a concrete floor mm-hmm. and he was threatening to assault your wife. No. <clears throat> <laughs> just no. <laughs> just no, you wouldn't. You, you Unless it's a massive thing. And eventually Gargano's going to turn around and say, I want the NXT title, and they're going to have a title v. title match. Well, I, think that's what's, I think that's where they're going, based. Then that makes sense yeah. as to why Gargano would currently be doing this and well, be almost leading Ciampa on. I think yeah. it's more... I think in Ciampa's world, it's Ciampa leading him on, but eventually... I mean, it's, it's yeah. obvious where it's going. I mean, it's, it doesn't take a genius to work that out, but... I love Ciampa. Ciampa's brilliant. I, I just, I'm not going to get into a WWE rant. I could do that all day, but let's not do that. No, let's let's not. talk about some other wrestling instead. Let's talk about a fucking terrible opening match. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> come, yeah, it's bloody awful. Don't play the role of Al in this, Cameron. This, this one what? can't be saved. <laughs> What are we talking about on this stupid wrestling podcast this week, month, well, quarter? Well, this week, <laughs> this week makes it sound like we're, we're, we're doing this on a weekly basis. Yeah, um, well, I say, this season. Last, this season, yeah, this year. Um, <laughs> last time round, obviously, I gave you a choice. Mm-hmm. And I said you can either have a pay-per-view, which I have been told is good, uh, uh, or a pay-per-view which... Oh, it's all coming back to me now. It's all coming back, good. like a NAM flashback. I know is good. And if you went for... Uh, you, we know is good. Then this would have been the 2000 Royal Rumble, because oh, um, it was uh, going to be. Jan- I didn't know we were going to record it in like well, <laughs> February now. It would be topical, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it would have been uh, vaguely topical, but yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, but we're gonna. And you, got, the vote went to having a pay per view, which I've been told is good. If you Google best WCW pay per views, this one of the Great American Bash of 1989 always comes near in the top three. Welcome to Baltimore, Maryland, and the high-intensity action of glory days, in contrast to the serenity of the thoroughbred farms of Worthington Valley. Here in Baltimore, the Inner Harbor, one of the great reconstructions of a major city in the United States. Then it's to the action in the Baltimore Arena. Let's go there for World Championship Wrestling. Glory Days. We are coming to you live from the sold-out Baltimore Arena here in Baltimore, Maryland. This is the Great American Bass Glory Days. Jim Ross and Bob Cottle with you here, ringside fans, and it is going to be a, a wrestling event. I'm sure you're not soon going to forget, Bob. It's either number one or or kind of two or three. It's never at the top three, but, but very real at the top five. Give it its credit. The opening video package is pretty good. Oh, it's amazing. Well, with the horses. Yeah, yeah, the glory days. It's the glory days. In yeah. Although, Baltimore, my first issue is it's called the glory days, and days is spelt with an S, not a Z. That's a yeah, problem but, in my book. Phil, do you know why that is? 
Why is that? The nineties yet. Yeah, but with, with eighty nine, it's, it's just about there. No, it's not. No, it's not. But, no, it's not. That, but, that was that was that was a radical thing for the nineties. Can I just point out my first note upon this podcast of the uh-huh. four or five pages of notes? The very first line I've written down, well, after a awesome video. Second line: two rings? Question mark? Exclamation mark? Fuck's sake! <laughs> I didn't get as yeah. far as I didn't get as far as two rings. I just wrote fuck's sake. <laughs> Why? Is there a bylaw? Whereby, <laughs> if we do a WCW paper, no, yeah. it has to have two rings. I think so. To... I think in this time period, this is the glory days of let's just throw everything at the wall and hope it sticks. Pretty it's much. like in Halloween Havoc '96. That's the only one I think we watched that's got a single ring. Yeah, even then, it had the stupid things down the side of the ring post. It did. It it did. did. Yeah, it did. It had the Slim Jim things down Snap the side. Yeah. Slim Jim. Oh yeah. Yep. I mean, um... I'm gonna throw a pen down. <laughs> one ring. <laughs> What's, why is it so hard? Why is there got to be two rings? Because it's a War Games match coming up. You I don't pillock. care. I don't care. Just one ring. To be, to be, to be fair, in defence of this, which I'm not going to defend, I'm going to tear apart, this match has two problems. Number one, this match exists. <laughs> Number two, we have a, probably a world first for at least this podcast. We have a two-ring battle royal with no finish. <laughs> How? <laughs> How because it, it's, it's 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 right. No, please. No, uh, can we refer to it as its correct title, please? The Triple Crown King of the Ring title, uh, Battle Royal. No, it's no, no, Triple no, no, King, no. King of the Ring. It, it, it features pretty much all the people you're going to see later on. <laughs> this make no sense. <laughs> which, which is a bit make, doesn't make really much sense, <laughs> <laughs> including people like Doctor Death, Steve Williams, who's in the bloody War Games match later. <laughs> I don't on. understand. Do you think he really wouldn't want to be doing this? Also, <laughs> don't also, get this. A, also, a very um, unusually sensual curly blonde Scott Hall. Did anyone spot that? I did. I did spot that. No, well, I didn't actually thing realize. Is, it was Scott Hall till the end of the match. Till after he was oh, in no, the no, no, like... it's, it's like when the camera's on them as they're coming down the aisle, he's like totally there. He's with his like uh, his, his, his massive bushy tash. I know, but even I, then, I, it just completely just passed me by. Oh, uh, Phil. I like five minutes in, I was like, that's Scott Phil. Hall. Machismo can just walk past you and you don't know. It's, cause well, it's, it's because he's not got his uh, slip back black hair, that's what it is. Probably, no, probably but yeah. he's definitely got the best porn tash of the show. He has, oh, oh, yeah, to be fair. That was, that's, 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 that's a bit of a tickler. I'd just like to know um, as well, before the uh, the match started, I believe there was a note came up on the screen which basically said, uh, presented in the most complete yeah. form oh, due I, to original production technical difficulties. No, technical difficulties in WCW, I, really? Oh, WCW, what? what have you done now? Why couldn't have this match have been the technical difficulty and not <laughs> ever seen? Well, well yeah. let me say that it wasn't, because we have the fucking rules explanation about the complicated <laughs> Battle Royal system they've got. Ladies and gentlemen, the first event of the Great American Bash Glory Days is the finals of the $50,000 Triple Crown Battle Royal. Now, ladies and gentlemen, momentarily, the finalists in this extravaganza making their way towards the ring. They will all be entering one ring. The only way to be eliminated is to be thrown over the top rope and into the second ring. The last remaining wrestler in the first ring will be our first winner. As the wrestlers hit the second ring, a second battle royal will ensue following regular battle royal rules. The only way to be eliminated from the second ring is by being thrown over the top rope into the floor. Finally, we will have two winners, and they will have at it, and they will win. Yeah, and I think I think w, WCW probably would have benefited greatly in this era by having the rule. If you can't explain the rules sufficiently in ten seconds, or in less than one screen of text, or in less than one screen of text, it's not worth doing. No, it's just not because this is Cause... what right. It's two rings. Yeah, mm-hmm. they all get into ring one. Yeah, you have to be eliminated. Into and ring two. Into ring two, which basically means you can only be eliminated through one side of a four sided we've, ring. We've had yeah. this argument at this point before. Yeah, yeah, we've yeah. made this point before, and when we had this, this happened before. And also, there's the gap between the ropes, so you yes. kind of like land on the apron between the two. The yeah, two you can. So you have to basically be hurled bullet like. <laughs> Which will, I think we come to that later, don't we? But I think, anyway, I carry think on. Is, is yes. that not the way that is, is it not the way that Brian Pillman gets eliminated? It is. Um, yeah. So anyway, like it's dart. yeah, like a lawn dart, Rey Mysterio style with Kevin. <laughs> 
<laughs> only not into the side of a production truck. Um, so then oh. once once you're eliminated, you're in ring two. two. So there's yeah. a battle royal. There's kind of like the loser's battle royal com- commences in ring two. And then you can be eliminated by being dumped out over the to the yeah. arena. And then floor, is it the which, last person left in ring one fights the yeah. last person left in ring Basically, two. The last yeah. person left in ring one can just sit back and watch whatever's going on in ring two. Yeah. And then the winner of the battle royal in ring two then has a standard one on one match with the winner in ring one. Ring one. And then they're crowned then, king of yeah. the yeah. battle there, royal. There is, there is one major flaw in all of this that it's got two rings? Apart from that, okay, just, cool, um, yeah. The winning team. Uh, can we just go over the finish because I just want to get this out. No, I want to get. No, there's a few bits I want to touch on. First of all, all right. they, all, they, all, they all come to the ring. Uh, the ring wearing a crown. Yeah, yes. I don't. I don't. I was about to say I don't understand that bit. Why they all got crowns? Because surely then you, you, it's the triple ring king of the ring. So if they're all kings, what's the point of them anyway? What's the um, point of any of this? <laughs> um, the crown is actually surprisingly hot for this <clears> match. Well, to be fair, it is the 80s. There's not much else. There's for a lot of the, the, yeah, it's the ridiculous. stuff going on tonight. Um, there's a quote, a belief from um, Jim Ross that says, uh, can you believe the action in the two rings? Yeah, and I can't follow any of it either. <laughs> no. I don't know what's it's going just, on. This, I don't know why you would put this on first. I've no don't idea why. Don't get it. And then, um, oh, it's just... It's just... Fucking terrible? Yeah. It's just, it's just an absolute... Mess. It's an absolute mess. It's a schmoz. It ends when, obviously, uh, Sid Justice wins ring one, yeah. and then Dan Spivey ends up winning ring two. So, the, you know, the, the skyscrapers are about to fight, and the crowd are really, really into this. And yeah. then Teddy Long, the manager, goes, No, player! It ain't going to be fighting. We're going to clean yeah. the money ourselves, because the winner gets, gonna get was it 50 grand? 50 grand. So 50 instead grand. of So Teddy Long saw the money and went, You know what? We could both be winners. And the crowd... Shit on this yeah. finish. <laughs> yes, and well, they, they, they shit on it so much the tape skips. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's how bad the finish is. It makes the tape skip. Is this probably the moment that I've written on my notes? Time has bent in on itself. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. It goes no, Just no. You'll be like, hello, I'm here to fix this enormously. So when we. Uh, the winners of the battle royal make it to the interview area. This the tape tries to kill itself so it doesn't record it for future <laughs> posterity. It doesn't and succeed. Probably, yeah. And then um, Gordon Soley's with um, Teddy Long oh, backstage oh, afterwards just, explaining this decision. Good old yeah. Gordon Soley. But good also, Soley. also the, the triple crown winners with a crown, that looks worse than the crowns they came out with. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a bit I weird. Don't, I don't get it. It's just, it's just if you want to like... If everyone does like a, like a dissertation about what was wrong with WCW in the 80s, like why they couldn't compete with WWE during this period, it's this. You just no, 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 no. It's this in a nutshell. Oh, there, is, there is another issue with this. It is called the booker, Mr. Dusty Rhodes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Who is a legend, admittedly, but did, by his own admission, fair enough, come up with some utter balls in his <laughs> Utter, utter yeah. balls. That's our testicles, and he's. But married. this, like we, 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 we talked about at the time, like the the the, the roster that WCW had, you know, with Ric Flair and Sting and Steamboat and all those guys at the top, but they just can't seem to just just have good matches, just get out of the way of the matches. You know well, that's I mean? because that's because they're they're hampered with bullshit stipulations like this. Yeah, this is it's, stupid. I mean, the added to this is the fact that WCW of this, even of this time. WCW were given a chance to like foreign wrestlers without making them oh. seem kind of like some comedy act. We'll get to that. We'll get because Muta Mu- Mu- in this is seen as a genuine threat. Yeah, you know what I mean. Okay, they do play a little bit on the whole, you know, Pearl Harbor thing. Yeah. You know, like Japanese, da, da, da. You know, this kind of stuff. foreigner. You know, you, you know, from the jewel of the Orient and all this kind of stuff. But so it's, he's treated with still, some measure of respect. Yeah, isn't he? he's seen as legit. You know, what I mean, yeah. it's not as if I don't think WWF of this time would ever do anything like that. Oh God, who was like the? Um, oh, well, Ricky Steamboat would have been over there, wouldn't he? If they had the yeah, kind of yeah, yeah but Ricky the Steamboat, time. Steamboat wasn't that long. But the Dragon wasn't he? He's on the card tonight, obviously. But yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, like, I can't think of any other kind of age apart from Mr. Fuji. Well, that's like, the obvious one. Exactly. He's like, what know, other Asian s- kind s- of star wrestlers do they have over there? They didn't have any. What, in 1989, 1990, in. Um, WWF. WWF. Oh, bleh. 
Uh, like, I remember uh, they had like some Japanese women in and stuff, but that was like in the mid nineties. That was that was, that was like there, the mid nineties because that was yeah, when they were getting that was when they were getting Hulk Hogan wrestled and uh, Alondra Blaze, wasn't it? Because yeah. they ran out. They didn't have any of their own people to wrestle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like you say, like there wasn't anybody that they that, like a foreign character were treated with respect. Even the Mounties, God, God love them. Yeah, treated exactly. With respect. They would always, you know, if you if you were if you were non-American in WWE at this time. You were seen as something of a bit of a joke, yeah. yeah and there. you were there to kind of get shown up. The only kind of exception to that, I would say, is if you, I'd probably say, if you were a non-English speaker, because I was going to say British Bulldog was kind of seen as legit. Well, yeah. Yeah. some days he was probably a non-English speaker, but for different reasons. Oh, come on, yes. dynamite still fresh in the ground. Be nice. No. <laughs> well, good because he was a dick. That's fine. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, so, opening match is shit. So, the match is, the, well, I so, think this is—I don't even think this is the opening match. This is some bloody tack on. If I to like for the this presentation, is, this is what would have been on the WWE pre-show. This would have been the that. pre-show. Yeah, yeah. Is, you know, this yeah. would have. This is the pre-show before pre-shows were a thing. Yeah, well, what makes me giggle is that two of the guys get eliminated, basically just come straight back out for another match. Yep. Yeah, this is um, Brian Pillman and uh, oh. Wild Bill Irwin. Wild Bill Irwin. Why was it Wild Who precisely? Don't understand that. <laughs> now, is what I was thinking about this the other day. Is Wild Bill Irwin not? Um, did he not play the? Am I getting things wrong here? Did he not play the goon? Hold on. In the I'm WWE, just, he I'm did. Just, yeah, he did. Oh my god! What? If, I'm not sure. If it's an upgrade or a downgrade. <laughs> Hold on, I'm just looking at it here. Where, where, where oh, are we? Yeah, you're right. Yep, it was the goon in 1986. I bloody thought it was. Yep, Came back him. for the uh, WrestleMania X7 gimmick Battle Royal. One of the best Battle Royals ever known to mankind. Not just for the Iron Sheik taking 25 minutes to get to the ring. <laughs> Not <laughs> no. being able to obviously win because he can't, they can't throw him over the top rope. <laughs> because he can't yes. take a bump. Now, um, I quite like this. The, the, the difference of stars this match I thought was quite interesting because Bill Irwin is like your old like barrel-chested... yeah tough guy kind of wrestler and Brian yeah. Pillman is like your archetypal what the wrestling's going to be in probably about four or five years yeah exactly right. Brian Pillman yeah. was probably well ahead of his time on that yeah so it's interesting to kind of get those two to go to the ring and see that kind of clash of styles but yeah. other than that I don't think there was much more interesting about this one well no 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 no, no. this this does contain our first um, sports related item where Wild Bill decided to javelin Pillman into the other ring that's the yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the one yeah, meanwhile a very also, porn-tastic uh, Nick Patrick's the referee here. I keep forgetting he's like he keeps knocking around in this kind of period. Yeah, he just he doesn't oh, go away. Because yeah. in... this was when he was just a, he was just a ref, wasn't he? He hadn't become like, yeah. a Nick Patrick character. He would be, he would like a, a and Nick Patrick NWO official referee kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So yeah, I love the way during this match, by the way, that Irwin's constantly shouting about Brian not flying. Yes. <laughs> it's like, you know, flying, Brian! You're flying. Yeah. It happens so many times. Yeah. So, so, so many times. Um, but yeah, the, the end of this match is like one of those like spots that now would be like, yeah, whatever. But back then, <laughs> the, the crowd go absolutely freaking berserk and JR sells it like absolute amazement. He's on the other yeah. ring. He can't oh, jump that far. No. All the way across in the other Oh, ring. man. It's kind of like it's kind of like currently what Ricochet is doing at the moment. People have not seen Ricochet in the Indies, are now seeing this guy just doing taking ridiculous risks. And back in yeah. 1989, this would have been a Ricochet esque like move. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. This, is, this, this, this would have been, you know, he's, the archetypal he's, flying Brian thing, isn't he's, it? Yeah. he's doing the crossbody from the other ring. I mean, to it's, be fair, he's got uh, like I say, he's got to go like an extra two feet, hasn't he? To, that's to, pretty yeah, much it. Yeah, he's to just, cover he's, the distance between the two he's rings. He's basically so. got to clear the gap of the two rings, which is about yeah. a foot. Yeah, and then it's that's about it. And then you know he just does the standard kind of cross body from the top rope, uh, yeah. and he's pinned. And There's a lot of that goes on tonight. There's because the interesting thing is about the matches tonight is this is obviously in an era when wrestling was still being portrayed as a legit sport. Yeah, especially but in, a, like, in WCW. Yeah, especially in WCW, which is, you know, the, you know, the proper wrestling kind of thing, in inverted commas. So there's a lot of moments at the end of these matches tonight where it's like finishes seem to sort of come out of nowhere. Yeah. And yeah. kind of be like, oh, right, oh, is that it? Oh, but okay, you've got done. to remember that, yeah, you've got to remember that this was obviously them portraying it as a legit sport, so there could be, like, snap, sudden 
ending yeah. the matches yeah. to look more realistic. And like, I think the whole the whole false finish thing wasn't as embedded as interesting as it is now, is it? I suppose. No, 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 no not really. Like, this is some of the more sort of southern wrestling where once it's once it's over, it's done. You're not going to yeah. get false finish. You're not going to get once yeah. they're going home, they're going home and come hell or high water. Yeah, especially like one, once a finisher goes in, like that's it. That's it's, it. Yeah, you're dead. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like Japan in that respect. But yeah. once the guy hits a finisher, done. Yeah. So yeah, this this, this is this is okay for effectively this is your opener. If, if that was the opener, fine. This is all yeah, right. And if it's in one ring, even better. Well, not yeah, actually. Well. It was in two rings technically. <laughs> they do switch about halfway through, and then yeah. just, they just go to the other one, and nothing's ever said about it. Because it's, it's exactly the same, isn't it? It's still, it's like it's like one's on fire and one isn't. Well, that would be <laughs> if it was Japan, one would be in fire, one would be covered in barbed wire and yeah. a in it or something. Yeah. Good old FMW. Exactly. So this would be a fair sort of stand contest. There's nothing really, there's nothing on the line. No. It's, it's quite, you know, it's, it's a good... The two workers doing a good match. match. It's good, two yeah. workers doing a good match. Yeah. Flying Brian gets to show off some of his shtick. Um, <laughs> you look at him, in, but you look at him now in this sort of video and you can't really believe that, what, in about six, seven years after this... He'd become like loose cannon, yeah. Brian Pillman, mm. and, and it's, the and two just seem night and day. <laughs> it's, it is like a switch almost went off one day, and all of a sudden we got the loose cannon. Yeah, exactly. As far as like you know, massive changes in wrestling gimmick. This that's, is that's one of the big ones. You know, alongside things like you know, um, GBL becoming yeah. John Bradshaw Layfield. Yeah, and. Um, you know, and, and another one that's coming up in well, about a minute's time. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, before that, um, here's Paulie Dangerously. Oh, he's, he's, he's back to old Gordo, isn't he? Talking about uh, Jim Cornette's knee is still knackered after Starcade 86. Yeah, what happened to Starcade 86, ladies and gentlemen? It was the scaffold match. Correct. Uh, Jim oh, Cornette God, that bump, was the one. Jim Cornette took a bump off the scaffold and bust his knee completely. He's still suffering to date. <laughs> yes, apparently he ripped up his ACL, wasn't it? And, yep. Well, and he's like still apparently, you know, had an operation at the time, but still kind of can feel it some days. Um, so, but to be fair to them, if, you, you know, you're going to, you know, call back to something that happened, you know, three years previous, then, you know, all power to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's a legit point. You know, he did bust his knee. He's not a sort of a wrestler, and that's what yeah. Polly Dangerously is going to work on, you know, at the moment. Yeah. Um, so we now have uh, the Dynamic Dudes. <laughs> Such a name. So see, from... see, he, he, he says he's not the 90s. Dynamic Dudes is nothing more 90s than that name. Yeah, but we're just yeah. on the verge of Dudes Turtle speak, aren't we? Yeah. So, so, dudes. And The Simpsons is gimmick. just starting up. Um, so uh, I just put. They are from the City of Sunshine. Where? I'm going to guess uh, Orlando. Orlando, LA. Where, they can, where, where, where people can be dynamic and dudes. They can be doodly dynamic. Together uh, with their mullets. Yep. Uh, I just put like, <laughs> I just put, this is awful. And then I put, is one of these guys Shane Douglas? Correct. Who is the other guy? Uh, John Laurinaitis, isn't it? Johnny Ace. John Correct. Laurinaitis. Johnny Ace. Yeah. So I love Big the fact Japan. that... Before this match, they start. They get some kid out of the audience and try and play frisbee with him, and he's not having any of it. No. Like, why would you wonder? They look like paedophiles. I mean, come on. <laughs> they're they're going to entice him out back in with the boys. I mean, it's well, weird. They're all dynamic, pe- dynamic, not for just the reasons in the ring. Yes, if, only, right. if, all, if only all paedophiles identified themselves by dressing yeah, entirely in cheesy, neon. Wouldn't it? <laughs> well, technically, Savile did. Oh, yeah, technically, did. Yeah, and he was a wrestler too. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's the hair. Like that, you can't have that hair and be normal. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll just put the, the skyscrapers win. Uh, yeah. No one died. A, hooray. <laughs> I did note as well, like, um, by the other ring, there's no security barriers. Mm. It's just like the crowd, which seems uh, I- ideal. Well. Uh, but through this, like, the crowd seem really hot for Sid. Sid, is he, Sid, Sid Vicious right now, isn't he? Yes. Yes. Like, like Sid was liked by people? Slamming this head into the foot of Big Sid Vicious. And the crowd ready to see Big Sid. Six feet nine, 316 pounds. Oh, and the wrote down about uh, uh, Sid comes in with a kidney grip as well. Because <laughs> we had, yeah. um, what was it we had with the, with the neck grip for like half an hour? Was that Yokozuna rest me in 10, wasn't it? Yeah, that was Yokozuna blown up. In the nerve pinch with the nerve holder. And so well, it's just like, right, <laughs> let's, let's get a kidney grip. Oh, there you go. 
Evolution and wrestling, folks. <laughs> good, good for those old kidneys. Spivey, after nearly killing somebody in the Battle Royal with a powerbomb, nearly killed Shane Douglas with a powerbomb. <laughs> yes, he did. It was very... <laughs> I think I just wrote down, that was sloppy. Yeah, he, just, yeah, he, he just doesn't do a good powerbomb. He just I mean, drops him on his head. It's hellish. I appreciate he's been stood up and walking around for like 10 minutes, so he's probably very tired. Yeah. But it's not a good powerbomb, is it? It's no. it's a, it's a classic pro wrestling Noah type power bomb where you're convinced the person's just died in the ring before yeah. your eyes. <laughs> like that that's where spinal stenosis comes from. Think yeah. about that. <laughs> you more of those, and you get edged. You know what I mean? Um, there's a moment in this where uh, Jr. has a little dig, up seemingly at Vince. But these men are athletes. They are very much indicative of the style of the NWA. Yeah. That's where the NWA differs from other federations. It's not snakes. It's not. It's not pets. It's, uh, athletes, it's, not, man. it's not bodybuilders that, that uh, lay under a heat lamp. Yeah. These are real primo athletes. It was. It's like. Mm, was that? Was that well hidden enough? I don't think so. Uh, I don't think bl- so. No, waited without saying it directly to the individual. Yeah, but <laughs> you much. know, we all remember the body off with Ultimate Warrior and Rick Rude. The, bo- Come on. the body off, that sounds what, terrible. What was it called? Pose off, wasn't there? Pose, Pose down? No, the, no, um, the horribly yeah. uncomfortable 10 minutes at rest of that one yeah. show. Yeah, that was, that was, was it Rumble 89? I think it was Rumble 89, yeah. I think yeah, it was but... more like a, like a piece of like homoerotic installation art to be it's fair no, it's no, nowhere, that, near, no, the, no, no, nowhere no. near the narcissist that was, <laughs> no, that's that was, that was that's the true. problem with, um, <laughs> with um, Bobby the Brain yeah. Yeah. and that curtain that just kept look at the cars look at the cars <laughs> show me one again Lex um, yeah so yeah yeah, it's, as it's, yeah, you're right Spivey terrible power bomb a Johnny Ace terrible <laughs> looking one yeah anyway so the, the skyscrapers win because they seem to be obviously building those up guys up quite nicely yeah. spelled on um, the skyscrapers ho ho but, yeah. Yeah. But there is a there is a we want Sid chant, which is just yeah. It's uh, weird what, you to did, see. What, what you did here is we want Sid to go away. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, like if Sid was done right, because I mean, when he was in WWF and Sid Justice, like I remember him. Being, I remember being a fan of Sid because he had a really good cho- uh, like power bomb and stuff, and his choke slam was really good. Yeah, but I just think he just wasn't managed. Like the whole thing of him being a heel when he pulled Hogan out of the Rumble and stuff. I don't know. Did, did, did he didn't wasn't land right, did managed. It? Was he not managed by Harvey Whippleman at one time? Oh, you know what I mean? He the was. character. <laughs> he was. I think the problem with him a lot of the time, he was he wasn't managed like outside of the ring very well, hence why mm. he was as insane as he was. Oh, like Stabby Scissors? Is that what we're talking yeah. about? Yeah. yeah. Was that, uh, who did he go after? Was it Aaron Anderson? I think it was Aaron Anderson, yeah. Yeah, he went after, was, that was in the UK, wasn't it? Was it was <laughs> yeah. not like crazy flight where like, Ric Flair was like going around with his robe naked and these and stuff. Um, <laughs> Ric Flair probably always went around with his robe naked and then he <laughs> the be fair. from hell. You know, that's, that's, that's Space Mountain. Anyway, um, <laughs> we've got a five-star classic next. Come on. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. I am not going to completely shit this match. What? I, well, well it's, it's decent. It's all right. No, but it's not. This is the, one of the few matches that has this magic word that's missing from wrestling so much these days. Psychology. Steroids. Oh, oh, sorry. Shut <laughs> up, Phil. <laughs> Steroids. No. This match contains psychology that I actually got up and applauded at when I saw it. Because so far I'd seen absolutely nothing that would lead me to believe WCW actually know what they're doing. It was the moment in this match, this tuxedo match, I should mind, between Jim Cornette and Polly Dangerously Wear. Mm-hmm. At the start of the match, Cornette is getting his offense in, but then Heyman starts attacking Cornette's knee with his cell phone. Brilliant! Yes. Brilliant! Mm-hmm. Harking back to what they said earlier on the night about the, uh, his old knee injury. Exactly. I was so happy that this terrible match at least had something in it. Yep. Yeah. But the rest of it, though, is... Homoerotic in front of 10,000 people. Well, Let's start with some positives. Paulie's music's good, and Cornette's yes. music is good. Massively overdubbed, though. It's, yeah, it's, it's weird seeing network, Cornette as a baby face when he comes out. Yeah, they're both. Neither of these people are natural baby faces. No. <laughs> and um, I think they describe Heyman's punch as a somewhat feminine right hand. I've <laughs> got there, Paulie with a feminine right hand. Yeah, this is just... brilliant. Wow. Starts choking <laughs> him out with his cummerbund, and it's yeah. just yeah. What's the what's the powder supposed to be? Because at one point, Heyman just uses powder randomly and just tries to like 
Oh, I thought it was like the old uh, Japanese nice. salt stuff. You, you know, I thought it was well. Yeah, I just like put. I've just put there. Is the powder cocaine? <laughs> no, because if that was the case, said said would be out looking for it. Well, true, true. true. Um, I'm assuming this is no DQ, considering like the way the phone's being used and there's powder all over the ring. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, if yeah, well, actually have to strip your opponent, why would they yeah. be rules? <laughs> uh, got it written down. I think it's Jim Ross says, uh, "Let's see some clothes coming off." And I've written down, "Let's not." <laughs> This is obviously true. Jim Ross is not so well written about hideous PD. You know, I mean, you, you got to feel sorry for like you know um, female wrestling fans of a certain persuasion who are probably really <laughs> thick of you know the, you know back in like the late nineties, early two thousands when you know WWF were putting on bra and panties matches and all this kind of stuff between like Stacey Keebler and Tony Wilson and all this kind of jazz. This is their equivalent. Yeah. <laughs> And I feel yeah, really, even. really sorry for them. Well, to be fair, if it was Ric Flair in this kind of match, he would just come out naked, because why not? Why not? Though, to, to, being fair to Heyman, when he is stripped off and loses the match, he, he, he goes. He oh, is yeah. gone. He's like out of that ring, and like he's like, yeah, off yeah. like a shot. Yeah. He's, he's straight down that aisle. He's gone. But never mind. But yeah, let it flow in gloriously behind him as he runs down the <laughs> aisle. I don't think either man would describe this as the classic that they would be... Yeah, no, nope. this, this is not a match they would die in hell for. No, not really. But there you go. Um, next, we have Gary Hart with Gordon Soley, uh, who details the fact that uh, tonight Muta will beat Sting because Muta is ready and he's calling in the powers of the Orient. Yes. So he was getting some yes, dinner before the match. <laughs> Whatever the hell they must be getting some barbecue spare ribs or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, get some teriyaki out. Yeah, pretty much. Get nice. some sake and uh, <laughs> good old time of it what other Japanese cliches can we think of some sushi yeah sushi some, was- yeah. some wasabi hand yes. job in the back room pardon what <laughs> <laughs> I don't what, think Gary Hart's doing that I don't I, manager or no manager you know what, what I mean what, what, what Chinese takeaways are there in Kilmarnock <laughs> uh, I'll tell you after the show okay. that's when you ask for a number 69 <laughs> oh yes oh, yes yeah. Oh yes, number sixty nine. Yes. And then, not only did the not only did the top two doors open for the little little hat, the <laughs> door the way they put it through, but the bottom two open. Oh as well. yeah. Anyway, anyway, speaking of sixty nines. Yeah. Uh, the Vost. <laughs> I'm sorry, I haven't got anything for that segue. Uh, <laughs> Here's Missy Hyatt. <laughs> it's the Vasty Club. <laughs> Yay! And it's uh, With Mike Captain Ro- Mike Rotunda. Mike, oh, Mike Captain Mike Rotunda. Captain. Can you, you you can you like you know how you look at him now when you kind of think. Bray Wyatt's dad. Oh, it's weird, isn't it? I, no, I think no. Bo Dallas's dad. Come on. I, yeah, well, true. I the same thing. Bo Dallas's dad as well. Yeah. I remember watching this first time round, and I watched it when I skimmed through the pay per view again because it had been three months since I'd seen this pay per view. Right. So I skimmed through it again last night. This was my first match that I went, yeah, this is cool. <laughs> well, but I think it helps that the crowd loves the Steiner. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Because this, this is literally this is just over four minutes. We're just about four and a half yeah. minutes this match. It ain't a long one. And you've nope. got probably like three and a half really good workers in there. Yeah, I mean, this is this is Scott Steiner's first pay per view. Is it? Is since it? they really? teamed up, since the Steiners became a team. Really? Wow. Yes. I didn't know that. Did not know that. This is Scott's first time on pay per view, and also the first time that the Steiner brothers, as we know them, teamed up. Wow. So what was it? I just did... Rick before this? It was just Rick, I assume. And this is obviously Scott must have joined the free. I don't know what the timeline is, but it's to, That's to crazy. Me. So, so why is the crowd so hot for him then? Just because they like Rick? Because they were desperate for anything that wasn't homoerotic or fucking terrible, so they will take anything at yeah. this point. You and you say that. Look at look at the the owl Scott spell. That's homoeroticism right there. Come on. Well, I wasn't going to say that out loud, but yeah, he was a nice man. Well, they both of them take a very rough tumble to the floor during the match. I think Scott yeah. does one, and then Rick takes one. They do a bit, yeah. And um, I, I think I'm pretty sure Rick comes back quite angry about this <laughs> and delivers some yeah. shoots at some point. I also like the fact that, you know, within about 20 seconds of the match beginning, all four members of the team are just brawling on the outside. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. There's a cracking, like, this This has got, like, a massive pace in it. Like, as soon as it starts, it's just, they're just gone. Oh, this yeah. is, this, this, like, four this minutes, hang around. Right. Just get everything in quick. If, if I give you some time, gentlemen, the uh, the tuxedo match was 6 minutes 22. This is 4 minutes 22. Oh, holy yeah. shit. That's what you so want, this, this gets 2 minutes more than the tuxedo match did. Yeah. Oh, 2 minutes less, rather. 2 minutes less, I was going to say. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But for that, it's, it, for that, it's, it's a cracker, though, for the 4 minutes. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. It doesn't, it, it, it's, it's not wasting time. It's yeah. just okay, literally you know, going about. Rotunda's a great worker. Sullivan's a great worker. You know, Rick's a good worker. Steiner can wrestle he's, he's there but it's not terrible he's not stinking up the place yeah. he's perfectly yeah, competent I think, I think with Scott Stein I think I think 
a singles career wasn't the best thing for him. No. Or he didn't. The transition for him being in, into a single wasn't as good as it could have been. Because mm. obviously, you know, as a tag team, you know, he a lot of his flaws could be hidden by you know tagging Rick in and doing some other bits. But as soon as he was kind of by himself, the gaps in his game were kind of exposed. But, but, but to be fair, if if this if Scott had never gone single, we've never would have had his glorious TNA run and his well, glorious promos that made absolutely no sense to anyone whatsoever. I mean, it swings around roundabouts, isn't it? What can I say? Yeah, this is true. Can't yeah. win them all. But the Steiners do win this one. Yay! Boom! That's the they do, way. yeah. But it's like both Steiners pin Sullivan after uh, Scott comes off the top rope. Another yeah. high cross body flying. Another Scott high Steiner. cross body, it was like just from the standard top turn buckle yeah. this time around. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this this is probably the first match of the night where you kind of go, yeah, this is pretty. Uh, that was good. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I was, I was I was I was thankful for that at this point because I was about to go. You know, by this point, I was about to come on the time we recorded and just berate yeah. you for well, even suggesting this. It's like we said. I said earlier, like the roster is really good. It, the roster's yeah. great. It's just they're hampered by whatever the booking. booking. Yeah, it's kind of like what we're experiencing right now. If you just get out of the way, just put the guys in the ring, let them wrestle and just get out of the way of it, <laughs> then it's great. Yeah. Like, what can just, you do? You know, this is why I watch wrestling. I'm not there for, like, overbooked bullshit. Mm. I just want two men to, or women, I don't care, whatever. I have a horse in there for all I care. As long as wow. I have some, I don't, you know, DDT is probably in a horse. cell. Horse in a cell. No, wait, that reminds me of Kennel from Hell. Let's not do that. No, no, no. Hell in a horse. <laughs> hell on a horse. Hell on a horse. Hell in a horse. There you go. Hell, hell on a horse. That's a gimmick that no one's done yet. <laughs> oh, God. I can imagine Vince going, I like it. Oh, can't, no. be worse, can't be worse than the Punjabi prison match anyway, sir. So. Let's not challenge them to anything like that, please. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Gordo's back. Hey. He's with a Sting and Eddie Gilbert. He looks like a trucker. He just wandered into frame. He did it, yeah. <laughs> it's like, should he be there? Oh, yeah, actually, he he's arrested. Okay, cool. He was I'm just dropping it. off deliveries. He was driving the Lex Express. <laughs> <laughs> it was early. He decided to come. He's, 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 he's coming come in early. In, he's going to come back in four years. Yeah. Oh, God. But that's it. We're, we're, like, Sting's gone and he's out to the ring. That's it, yeah. He's a yeah, quick, quick promo and away we go. We're off. To the, yeah. to the ring. Muta um, gets it going when he comes out. Bit of racism, but fair enough. Oh, his entrance is the most stereotypical thing ever. Yes, but it's wonderful at the same time because it's something unique, something different. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. This yes, would have been racist as hell, but it's you, at this point when the <laughs> nothing Kramer looks like Muta, does it? No, you, you knew shit was getting real when Muta came out because it was something so drastically different to the usual that you were seeing, and the crowd knew that as well because at this point Muta hadn't lost the match the entire spring, so Muta was as hot as he could get coming into this match against Thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it stings hot as well. I mean, the crowd will go nuts for him, don't they? Yeah. Even oh, yeah, his they... music is resolutely shit. <laughs> is it the man Somehow called Sting? He can overcome that. Man called Sting. Ding, 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 ding. Man called Sting. Ding, ding, ding. It's terrible. And ladies and gentlemen, his opponent, Hailing from Venice Beach, California. He weighs 252 pounds. He is the world television champion, accompanied to the ring by Hatsaw Eddie Gilbert, the champion is Sting! As this crowd rises to their feet in this one, the television championship of the world will be on the line here. The Stinger with one of the most impressive one-loss records in the NWA history. But he's going against a man that has never been beaten, has never been pinned since he arrived in the NWA. Oh, it's the irresistible force and the immovable object in this one. 
you've got like you, you, two of your probably your biggest stars come to the ring for this match, and the, oh. the thing is still covered in the powder from the fucking tuxedo <laughs> match. Twenty minutes. Yeah, okay, but it's you know that's that's all right. It's not. It's not a little bit dangerous. No, not really. There's lots of slippy powder over the place. Someone busts in the it's out. It's going to be slippy. It's be fine. <laughs> all right, all right, fair. I don't to see if there was a thing back in 1989. Um, you've got two rings. you just got the one that doesn't have the powder ring. Isn't it? That's, why, that's why Sting, I think, just leaps to the other ones. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. That's the powder. how it's they, they both start out in separate rings, but Sting just kind of like just flies across and across, like, he like can. handles them or cross bodies them or something like that, <laughs> you know, across the middle section. <laughs> across the fine land. This match goes also 100 miles an hour as well. This yeah. really does, yeah. This is, um, I've got the time machine in front of me. This is 8 minutes and 40 seconds of pretty damn consistent action. I think the only kind of breaks they seem to take is when one gets knocked to the outside and has a bit yeah. of a breather for a, then, like, yeah. 10 seconds. And that's got down, there's, a, there's, there's a point where Muta does a moonsault and lands it. Oh, it's like, beautiful. Like, I've written down, like he's from the future. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he just does much. it, just because. It's just. Um, quite he's so crisp. He, he's like all of his moves. Like Sting's like pretty good as well, but Muta yeah. is just like he, he's just another world in this. By this point, it's just so it's, crisp in his way. Like, selling is in this match is bloody brilliant as well. Yeah. Oh, and he's in the abdominal stretch. Yeah, because you are genuinely thinking that Sting's in trouble with this one. Yeah. Because yeah. he's he's facing this mysterious, almost like almost you know, de- demon like presence. Yeah. You know, oh. of this. He's evil. He's evil. And yeah, do you know yeah. why he's evil? He does why? the most evil of moves. He grabs the rope when he's in the indomitable stretch. Yes. And, or, and he, well, apart from the spitting bloody red mist. Oh well, yeah, that's well, evil as well. But <clears> the rope, <throat> grabbing the rope in the indomitable stretch, that's the worst, the most heelish thing in the world, oh, yeah, that is. This is ever. also before that he also had his pipe that he required in, a few, uh, in the past. If you remember a previous podcast, Wrestle Kingdom, oh God, was it? Eight. Eight we watched, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Muta went under the ring and basically took a small piece of the ring out. Oh, it was part of the lighting rig, wasn't it? It was lighting statue, that's what yeah. it was. Yeah. It kind of came out with a bit of like a steel girder. But I mean, considering this is for, the, at the time, WCW's second title, it's in the middle of the card and it just gets the crowd back up again. Oh, it's, it gets a sting. They absolutely go nuts for him. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, he's at the moonsault. They just, oh. He's amazingly over. Sting's like fantastically over doing all this. Yeah. Um, so what have we got? Uh, just kind of, you know, a muter's crossbody over the top rope. Yep. Uh, Sting with a fantastic looking standing drop kick. They're fighting in the aisle. Uh, Sting gets a press slam in. Um, but then they say muter abdominal stretch. Then muter rakes the eyes. Sting what a with bastard. Two- Sting, yeah, exactly. Sting <laughs> with two clotheslines, which the crowd go bonkers for. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy, um, isn't it? But then the ending, there's a green mist shot that uh, Muta is aiming for Sting. Sting red dunk, mist, hits, red mist. Red mist, sorry. It wasn't green. It hits the ref. Yep, so the, the ref reads out. Um, and then there's a, a bit of a kind of weird finish in that Sting... Uh, a bit uh, of a weird finish. Like, <laughs> bit of a, bit Jesus. Of a finish. Um, Sting does a belly back suplex, and then it's um, they, they're both or their shoulders are down. So Sting gets announced as the winner, but then it's kind of it so Muta goes in. with the belt. Crowd's Muta chanting bullshit. With the belt. Uh, Muta looks a bit crazy, and the crowd are chanting bullshit. Yeah. It won't be the first time tonight that Muta looks crazy. Yeah, <laughs> but um, and also leads for the rest of the night. Fucking Jim Ross keeps talking about the belt. It's like, come on. <laughs> Every five minutes, he's talking about them going, oh, there's some comments. So they're talking about the belt. Oh, there's some backstage shenanigans going on. Oh, it's like, no, Jim, it's just move. It's stupid. Just move on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter in the long run. Just, just move but on and leave it alone. This yeah. match as well was a bit of a cracker. Oh, but it was great. Yeah, well, you, being so arguably, you've had, could they have had a bad match at this I, point? They would have to have tried very hard. Mm. Yeah, pretty much. But this is like, um, I mean, the, the last two matches in the card, sort of the middle of the card now. Yeah, and the, both these matches, the, the you know uh, the Steiners and the Varsity Club, and this one have been like fast and furious and to yeah. the point, and well, not really for hanging around. You know, the best way to continue that pace is to get Lex Luger in the ring. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's what he wants. Uh, before that, though, we've got Go- Gordon Soley is with Lex Luger, who's the US champion at this time. Yeah, uh, Luger does not want the no DQ stipulation in this match. Uh, team of attorneys, remember. Uh, My thoughts are this, Gordon. We go walk a long ways. You know that I say what I mean. I've had a team of attorneys here all day long. 
And I got a big surprise for all you out there, everyone out the audience in Baltimore, but most of all, Ricky Steamboat. He has. He's got a team of attorneys. He doesn't want this new. He wants a straightforward. Well, the problem is they're all rubbish because they're all flexed into mirrors. Exactly. Steamboat is uh, during his entrance is um, being held on a um, sort of plinth, isn't it? Well, carried by people. Uh, they, they mention that he's being led to the ring by his beautiful family, but they never once mention that he's being carried on a massive plank. Yes, family, <laughs> slaves. They don't even acknowledge it. Carrying What's a massive dragon. But it's, it's his beautiful family, Phil. It's, it's like being like to the ring by his beautiful little family. But there's a dude on a plank with a dragon. Oh. I mean, surely you'd point yeah. to that as in your commentary. A dragon. Oh, there's a woman looks, and a kid. Aren't they nice? A dragon. Look him, looks, get him out of the way. Get him off the ring. Yeah. There's a man a with a dragon. He's bored as hell. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So they start off. Uh, they, oh, don't they, forget, Luger comes out on the turntable. Yes. He does, yeah. <laughs> I did. I was just looking at my notes, kind of wondering why the hell I'd written down Lex Luger's disc thing breaks down. Yeah, his turntable. <laughs> and I couldn't remember why. Yep. It's now we know where Bobby Roode got his from. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you um, go. I will. I will actually say we have made fun of the past of Lex Luger's lack of selling. I think at this point he had to actually sell, but didn't need to try and sell because Steamboat was hitting him with some very, very, very hard chops. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> And yeah, you don't need to sell when you're in the ring with probably the greatest seller of all time. No. Just let Ricky do it for you. Exactly. Yeah, pretty much. Your job um, is to don't kill Ricky and let him sell. Yeah. The confusing thing before this, though, is apparently Gary Capetta says that it's still DQ. Still DQ. Lex Luger's not happy. He's yeah. Not happy. But then Steamboat accepts the dropping of the no DQ. So we're back to proper rules. Yeah. Yeah. That was worth so our time, wasn't it? Yeah, pretty much. So it's just like, yeah. so they lock, they lock up, and it's, it's effectively it's a match of Steamboat's speed versus Luger's power. Yep. Yeah. Because think um, yeah, it starts off being all steamboat, and then Luger basically like just knees his head off. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> just yeah. woof. Two huge drop kicks to kick yeah. it off from Steamboat. They were outside the ring for Chop City. Steamboat with an atomic drop, <clears throat> but then a clobbering Luger clothesline, which they're still outside the ring for. Press yeah. slam by Luger, and Luger's knees to the back of Steamboat's head. Yeah. Lovely. And then we get the old um, Lex Luger wandering around the ring, hands on his hips, trying not to get gassed. Yeah, is this yeah. is this the one where the referee gets a bit weirdly involved? Because of quickly, Tommy Young, the referee, tries to stop a steamboat chop by holding on a steamboat's arm, which allows Luger to get a cheap shot in. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you know, it doesn't make any sense to why the referee would be like, "No, no, no, you're not allowed to hit him." Oh, can't do him. that. Come on. Uh huh. Um, also, they did they mention at some point that Luger was the rookie of the year. <laughs> Yeah, Lex Luger fuck. was rookie of the year. Let, wait, let me just say that again. No. Lex Luger was, was rookie was, of the year. It was obviously a very slow year. I'm going to just double check and see what year that was. Hold right, on. Lex Luger. I don't know. Lex Luger, good wrestler. No, Google doesn't bring anything back. <laughs> doesn't bring anything back. <laughs> 89, probably. Well, he was Pro Wrestling Illustrated's most popular wrestler of 1993. Jesus, I guess that was the Lex Express time, though, wasn't it? I suppose. So. Oh, that's true. Hang on. Oh my god. Lex Luger, <laughs> rookie of the year. I've got Lex Luger's Wikipedia up. The picture his Wikipedia is absolutely amazing. It's not a great picture, is it? Oh, I'm going to have a Let's see. What is it? <laughs> With his man U cap. Oh, yeah. Luger in 2007. Yep. I don't know. Right, I've got it. I've got it. Lex Luger was rookie of the year in Pro Wrestling Illustrated in 1986. Really? Yes, he was also in Feud of the Year for three years running. Was oh, that with like um, uh, Flair and stuff and the Horsemen and that sort yeah, of Yeah, he won 87 with the Four Horsemen versus the Superpowers and the Road Warriors. 80 and 90 were again with Ric Flair. Uh, that's that. He was also apparently Wrestler of the Year in 1997. What the fuck? Fuck. Ninety-seven. <laughs> yeah. Seven. Well, well, well I mean, mind you, you know, wait a minute. So he would to be right. To be fair, Luger, as far as his career went, he recovered from being not the new Hulk Hogan in WWF hmm. by being the first guy as the shots fired in the Monday Night War. So I suppose. Can I just? Can I just also describe who the, pe- the three people behind him were, just to put this in context? Lex Luger won 1997. In second place was Stone Cold Steve Austin. In third place was The Undertaker. And in the fourth place, it is Diamond Dallas Page. Wow. Wow. DDP. I think if we ever do um, a round table for who was the wrestler who was in the right place at the right time. 
Uh, it's Lex Luger. Ooh, well, yeah, mm, probably, actually. You're probably right. Yeah, he's in I, there because... Oh, if you think, I, would, I would argue Steve Austin. Well, yeah, I was going to say Austin as well. But like the way that his career was made in this kind of light, late 80s period by like the matches with Ric Flair and the Horsemen and stuff, I think it vastly overinflated how good he really is. Well, yeah, there was... he, he's a, he's a decent hand, but he's not anywhere close to. No, he's not someone you'd build a total, a whole company over. As we was proved in the ninety three with yeah. really close to the, the exactly. next express experiment. Yeah. And also, um, when he was rookie of the year, second um, that that year was Bam Bam Bigelow, and third was Sting for rookie of the year that year. I've just found something hysterical. So, in nineteen eighty nine, according to Dave, to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Lex Luger was the most improved wrestler of 1989. Depends Talk- on where you're starting from. Again, if he's having matches all year with Steamboat, Flair, like that calibre wrestler, you can't help but look good because of the way they can carry anybody to an amazing match. That then shouldn't count then because that is not you yourself doing the work. That is letting the great guy carry you. I suppose so. Like, you still got to hold up your end of the, sp- uh, your end of the bargain in that match. And Lex can barely do that. Yeah. He's a conundrum, isn't he, Lex Luger? He's he's about as conundrum as how does Hercules keep getting paid? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> oh, Hercules in his pants. <laughs> I'd rather not, thank you. Yeah. Anyway, back to this match. Yeah. <laughs> but again, like um, in this match, you've got Steamboat selling and makes Luger look absolutely amazing. I mean, yeah, it does make yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if, the point being that Luger was around a lot of people who knew what they were doing, so therefore yeah. it didn't really matter. Yeah. Um, we also but, have another instance of the second ring being used. Yes. Oh, right. Steamboat takes a dodgy spill, doesn't he, into that other ring? Yeah, he gets backdropped into the other ring, which wasn't oh, fine. The uh, the steamer, as I believe he's referred to at one point. Oh, why is he called the steamer? That clearly, just sounds bizarre. Clearly, clearly nobody from Scotland was on the crew at this point. So you can't call him a steamer. Why is that? You just can't. No, <laughs> no. Did he do that? Don't do that. <laughs> Sorry, it's picturing like Jim Ross Comte and the Scottish fell off to one side, fixing the light with a cigarette in his mouth. Like, you can't, can't do that, pal. It's no you shite. Can't, you can't. I love how Phil's attempting to do a Scottish accent in a podcast for two guys from Scotland. I didn't think it was that bad, to be fair. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was passable. Yeah. Yeah, it, was okay. it wasn't quite Chris Pine levels, but we'll oh, let you well, with it. Well, you know, the both of you can fuck off. Um, <laughs> we get a chair. Chair comes out. This is where the greatness of Jim Ross is once again exposed. Luger goes for the chair, but Steamboat mm-hmm. scoops him up and throws him into the turnbuckle. Steamboat then gets the chair, and Jim Ross is pleading with him. And what happens? He gets waffles him. He gets DQ'd mercilessly. But then Luger runs like an absolute mentalist away well, from the whole scene. Take out yeah. the like a like an absolute like a mentalist. Yeah, pretty much. This match it, was great. This was it fun. was decent because once again it looked like a proper fight. Steamboat's yeah, always. Boat's I don't think. Crackhead, I don't think it? I've ever seen Steamboat in a bad match. I think it's it's again it's one of these ones that's going to be an anomaly if you see it. Maybe like his later stuff when he's really old. But well, even then, like really his old. matches with Jericho and stuff, he still he still got it, but his his body's just not there anymore, is it? Oh, but yeah, but off. that three legends thing. What was it? WrestleMania twenty four. Him, oh, Piper, and and, and, ah, and Snooker. Snooker. Yeah. yeah, of the of the three, of those guys that have faced um, Jericho on that night. Do, do you not remember looking at Steamboat wrestling Jericho, kind of going, "Blimey, Steamboat can still have it." Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was on Jericho's podcast. They talked about how, like, they had about like off that they had a series of matches for like the next few months. Did they? Yeah, it was like a mini feud. Yeah, incredible. Like a little feud going. Cool, because um, they realised that Steamboat was the one that could actually still wrestle. Over. Yeah, and they had good chemistry. Yeah. Thought, well, we'll have a few more matches. I think there was. Um, yeah. yeah, there's there's a good little bit. They talk about how they kind of changed the finish. To the, Steamboat changed the finish to a match in the ring on them and stuff. It's, so yeah, like he he could still he had the he could still go but it's just like you know the body was just not there enough to kind of carry on going yeah. as much as he wanted to yeah, so. but you know I remember watching that at Wrestlemania thinking you know because you've had like Snooker who was basically shuffling to the ring yeah and Piper God love him was you know was that another it's time that Piper was like 
discovered he had the lymph, uh, the cancer? Um, it was either shortly before or during that time, I think. Was it? Yeah, because you remember the only reason they discovered he had cancer is because he had to do a medical yeah. for the match. Yeah. And then, because he was wrestling and as part of the whole shindig, they have to do the full medical to let them in the ring. Yeah. And that's when they discovered he had elevated white blood cells. And then they ran further tests and found his cancer. So he, he often credits the fact that he was trying to get back in the ring as saving his life kind of thing at the time. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I like this match as well. The middle of this yeah. pay per view is magnifique. So yeah, far, I mean, I mean it feels more like where's the last two feel more like wrestling matches. This feels like a storyline match. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's a, a good storyline match. And it's, that's you a good know, one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's it's good. Little... it does what it needs to do really, really well. So, um, uh, so next that... we have Jim Ross in the crowd. Why is he in the crowd? Because they're setting up the war games. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I'll just put there now some fluff so they can put the cages on. Yeah. Uh, so blah 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 war games blah 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 teams blah 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 promos yeah uh three birds and the Samoan SWAT team it's just shouting yeah well the three birds just kind of shout and the Samoans just growl well yeah but I don't believe they utter any words whatsoever uh Terry Gordy is going to drop the bomb on Baltimore doesn't sound like a good thing to say does it things you can say pre 9-11 um, yeah, and then it's like, and then I'll put down here. Why do the face team do separate promos? I don't, don't know. know. The heel team are all like all in the same room. Uh, the face team are like, nah. <laughs> we may be a team pal, but I want more in space. Yep, pretty much. Um, we get pyro, sort of. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, do they notice love- during Doctor Death's promo? He sounds like Jim Duggan. Yeah. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm going bird catching. I'm flying around. And I'm looking for the birds because I'm a bird crusher. And you know something? I'm looking out here for my bug spray to kill the Samoans. <laughs> yeah, he does actually. Yeah, I did not. Will you, you need to splice that in just as a, an audio comparison for everyone. Of course, of course I will. <laughs> I've got well, yeah. tons of Duggan sound clips. I'm a legit fighting machine. Oh. <laughs> anyway, oh, so. I love Duggan. What's more intelligent, me or this piece of wood? Ho! Oh, oh, don't, oh. Don't, don't forget your old, um, tell him, Hawk! Oh, God! <laughs> I love that promo so much. The whole thing I was going, I was going, tell him, Hawk, tell him, Hawk. Tell him, Hawk! He said it! <laughs> what was I listening to the yes. other day? What was I was listening to Lance Storm the other day, and he was going on about promos, um, oh. and how, you know, people often say like you know oh you know this promo was terrible and you know the example he gave was the ultimate warrior and he says like people Mm. would say the ultimate warrior couldn't do a promo but he says even on the um self-destruction ultimate warrior dvd box set you had christian who was able from memory to recite the entirety of the wrestlemania 6 you know put the plane into (laughs) another oh Oh, god God. and it's like and lance storm's whole point is saying if that promo was so awful then why can a man who was a kid at the time, remember that entire promo word no, he's right. Word he's right. 14 yeah, years later. This is true. I mean, that so. promo is definitely out there, and as was the Ultimate War probably was when he did it, but it was so different to what you've been presented elsewhere, it was going to stick in your mind regardless mm. of what it was. Yeah. Because he was so embedded into his character that it yeah. just kind of it almost it, it made sense in his the world of the character. If that makes it, sense. It, it made sense to, in this context. There's a man in front yeah. of a terrible green screen shouting at you with little to no sense. Which is why, but you know, it's now time for Hawk to speak. Tell him, Hawk. I love it. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Tell him, um, Hawk. And there's so... no, like animal just like when he turns his head. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so after what feels like 45 minutes we get to our war games match we do which is the road warriors animal and hawk tell them hawk um, oh, who are going mid- for family members remember while I wasn't even out a week when we get done with you we're going for family members boys the midnight express Bobby Eaton and Stan Lane and Dr. Death Steve Williams with Jim Cornette and Paul Ellering uh, we're facing the Fabulous Freebirds, Jimmy Garvin, Michael Hayes, and Terry Gordy, and the Samoan SWAT team featuring Fatu and Samu, uh, which you might remember more if you're a WF fan as the H-Rinkers. Yep. Uh, I love how um, Terry Gordy's just not into the whole matching gear thing. No. Not really. <laughs> no. Not at all. Like, you man, uh, it's Jimmy, Jimmy Jam uh, Garvin. Jimmy Jam, Jimmy Jam yeah, Garvin. Garvin. And um, Michael Hayes are like completely in sync. Just their, 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 their own game but Gordy's like no I'm just going my waistcoat and some normal stuff so some good yeah. maybe some funky glasses but that's as far as I'll go 
the first note I wrote in this for this match was this is going to be some blood here. Yes. You reckon? Do you uh, think? It's, w, it's WCW, it's the early late 80s, early 90s, it's a yep. War Games match. Blood's a prerequisite, I would say. Pretty well, much. there's loads of dodge stuff coming on. It's like um, uh, the Road Warriors come out on their bikes. <laughs> you, you can't hear the rules explanation because it's so loud. Yep. The ring looks rickety as fuck. The ring at points before this match was looking rickety. Now attaching metal to it is just making it dodgy. probably more structurally sound. And, is, it, and, is it not the same idea as the 92 War Games match when we did that? It was like... You know, the fact that the actual thing looks rickety as hell kind of adds to the danger aspect. Of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can collapse them at any point. Yeah, because if the, if, the, if the match doesn't kill them, the ring probably will. Yeah, and exactly. Just to put some more danger into the mix, a bloody cameraman goes into the ring. Oh, God. I would, yeah. I would, I would, so, what are you doing, not... man? You're not getting paid enough, surely. So, uh, the, the Samoans kind of attack each other on the way down as well. Yes, right? he's going nuts. <laughs> um, so, Jimmy Garvin begins, uh, Bob Eaton begins. And oh, who won the like... toss, by the way? Let's just figure that I'm out. Just, we just clarify that. Who won the toss? I understand the coin toss was held before we went on the air. Yep, the yep. Freebird Samoan group has won the toss. That means that when the first five-minute period is up and another man is uh, allowed to enter the ring, Bob, it will be a member of the Samoan uh, Freebird contingent, making it two-on-one. So they will have the advantage yeah. until all ten have entered the ring and the war games begin. Was it the heel or the face team? It was the heel team. because No w- way! Because WCW were not retarded yet. <laughs> <laughs> can't believe can't believe they won the, the toss that's ridiculous which is weird oh I have the, another quick question I wanted to raise at this point huh go on why was Express such a popular na- name for teams in the 80s um because the Express, Express, Rock and Express, Rock and Roll Express. Express the Orient Express people like the US Express I cannot believe you put the Orient Express in the same category <laughs> I'm not, saying, like, I'm, not saying I'm not saying like I'm not saying I'm not saying of teams. I'm saying why was Express used in so many team names? For three teams, it's not that many. It's four teams, wasn't it? Was there a US Express, Lex Express? Yeah, that wasn't a tag team. That was just a bus. But there's a lot of teams with Express in the title. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but no. <laughs> what's happening? I don't know. Um, it's just weird. This... I don't understand why. Yeah, uh, yeah there's there's some bloody good spots in this there's a lot to write i mean essentially this is the dr death clinic i think well pretty much yeah i've got it here dr death comes in straight double arm clothesline <laughs> yeah, uh, just... dr death press strams gordy up against the roof yeah that was um, pleasant yeah and then after that samu comes in usual war game is brawling yeah. samu and gordy double suplex to dr death animal comes in he goes mental on everyone oh, the yeah. animal crowd... shoulder charges over both rings well the minute animal gets in the ring i think the, i thought the match the the whole thing was going to break because the crowd go absolutely nuclear. Oh, nuts. Bloody nuts. Business will pick up for a yes, couple sir. of minutes, Bob. Yes, sir. It's going to really get physical now. Ah! Animal is ready to fight. These days, uh, we're kind of like all used to, you know, we've seen so many spots and so many fans. You're always looking for you know, the background detail behind it, or why would this happen, why would this happen? It's very difficult to get crowds into um, like this as much as they are now. Well, you've got, like, so many teams who are just over. Like, the Rogue yeah. Warriors are massively over. Exactly. Yeah. You, you're still in that period of time where it's portrayed as a, as a legit sport. Yeah. Yep. Although, one question, weren't um, Dr. Death and Terry Gordy a tag team in Japan at this point? I think they either were or they were just broke up. I think you're probably. Let me it's check. Around, what do they call let it? The Minnesota Death Squad or something? Some yeah, kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me find out for you. Carry the on. Miracle Death Machine. It was something like that. Death Machine. Death Machine would be great. Right? Carry on. I'll, yeah. I'll do. Oh, I'll okay. Do oh, and also, this, this match also proves that there is nothing, nothing more awkward in wrestling than trying to climb between two rings. Yeah, no, because you do the kind of like leg over the middle rope, bend down, stand up, <laughs> leg over the next middle rope, bend over, stand up. It's like so yeah. awkward looking, awkward. it's ridiculous. Right, uh, I think some uh, people just go, you know, I'll just jump over the two ropes and just call it quits. Michael Hayes is in huge DDTs, and then he climbs into the ring by climbing through the ropes, bending up, <laughs> really up. awkwardly. Really awkwardly. Uh, Hawk comes in straight off the top rope, Hawk shoulder block over both ropes. Exactly. Uh, Hawk, just, just jump him don't yeah, bother just climbing jump just jump Hawk him Hawk Neal's clothesline off the top rope to Garvin and then Garvin submits to a hangman by Hawk which does look painful as hell that doesn't look fun no it does, does not look fun I also, no. enjoy, I also enjoyed the part where uh, 
Hayes realised that eventually he had to get in the ring. Yeah, he just <laughs> starts just... DDTing fools everywhere. Yeah, de- but at that point though, there's no one's bleeding. No, it's, I was very disappointed. Then the blood yeah. came. <laughs> I thought we got after that, but yeah. it's like, like we the last the one we did with the um, Sting Squad versus the. Oh, there was blood the, in like ten seconds. There. Yes, Austin hits the cage straight away, and it's just gushing blood out of his face. Pretty much, um, I can confirm that Terry Gordy and Steve Williams were the uh, tag team of the Miracle Violence collect- Connection. Wow! Oh yeah, I knew they had some really weird Japanese style uh, name. That, that is the greatest tag team name I've ever heard. From July nineteen eighty-seven to August eighty-seven. Yeah, sounds nice. Like that. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, they um, that was in that was in Jim Crockett Promotions, and then they came back in all Japan in, ni- in nineteen ninety. Oh yeah. Because yeah. he also won the Triple Crown as well for yeah. Japan. But yeah, they were called the Miracle Violence Connection. That sounds that's that's a brilliant that's a, name. Almost as good as Mental Death Lariat. It's almost as good as Mental Death Lariat, yeah. yeah. Mental Death Lariat is, is gonna be one of the greatest tag teams. But then um yeah, um Gone submits, but they hold the door closed while animals just getting masked in the room. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Animals just animals completely beat up. Because... And they start trying to take it apart. Literally. <laughs> yeah. right, lads, Tearing at it. Do you think? Do, do, do you think they were running long, so they thought they'd help out the ring crew by demolishing the cage? I, well, I, who knows at this point? Who knows what's going on? Who knows what like Hawk's thinking at this stage? Oh, probably Christ nothing because it's that mushed up. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, as a war games match, I mean, how, how long was it? Was it? It wasn't uh, as long as well, this twenty-two is minutes. Twenty-two minutes and eighteen seconds. It's the longest match of the night. It doesn't feel as long as the the dangerous alliance one, but it's still cracking though. It's just, feel, it doesn't feel as long as the opening match. <laughs> That's a fair point. It's just bonkers. Like once it starts going, it's just like it's, it's ridiculous. That's why war games matches work. They start off quite slow, quite serene, but as you add more bodies to the mix, it gets more and more chaotic. Yeah. Then you get to the point where everyone's in, the it's door's just, locked, no one's flying off ab- the top of the fucking cage because they forgot to put a roof on it. I'm looking at you, WWE. <laughs> war games has a fucking roof. But is it yeah. worth having the ring in there? To cause all the problems for the rest of the card. Oh, that's the trouble with it, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. a really good idea, but it, the detriment to the rest of the card cannot be looked down. That can't be no. looked past. It, it, what, 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 actually, what I think would be quite funny is if they had like a you know a bullseye, how you could go for the money, or you could take what's <laughs> behind the barrier. You'd have something <laughs> like that where you get to the war games match and this giant box lifts off and the other ring is revealed. <laughs> With like smoking pyro going on, <laughs> but then you have like a giant box in the middle of the arena for the entire people. No, completely block of view for some yeah. people sitting on one side. One quarter the... of the crowd can't see what's going on because it's no, a giant no, no, no. fuck off no, box. No. There's a big massive wooden box in the way. <laughs> no, I have to have a whatever solution. did that before? <laughs> I have a solution to this now. Here we Fight go. Club, oh. Fight Club Pro run a, ma- run a weekend called Project Mayhem. One of the main events for I think it's usually the Saturday night is a death match of some kind. Now. All of the other matches take place. You walk into the venue, there's a ring there. All oh, everything is great. The death, ma- the death match comes on, usually involving Jimmy Havoc, because why not? A barrier drops down, and everyone moves to this other ring that's all cordoned off and safety-proof, basically. They could have done that. It would look great. No? So he couldn't have. He's just having the ring what there. Was the, just... What was the one, the, the, the triple-decker cage match where Hogan and Savage basically battered nine other folk? <laughs> <laughs> and that that one was at the top of the ramp. Oh god, that's right. Oh, it, well, are you not going to have the same sort of problems they had that night? Is that like against the the Dungeon of Doom, or whatever? It was called? Dungeons of Doom, yeah, and it had like you know that's, that's, that's got to be on our list at some point because no, that just needs to oh, be talked about. Yeah, What's well, it probably, yeah. <laughs> well, but there we go. Anyway, main event time. Yeah. Main event time. Main event time. Right. Main event. Hang on. Here we go. <laughs> Jesus. All right, Al. <laughs> My IPA. Yeah. Um, All right, you hipster. It's enough out of you. Uh, Gordo is backstage with the one and only Ric Flair. Mm. Yes. But it's a quiet Ric Flair promo. Yeah, oh, I know. No. You're not really. It's, it's the, no. it just weird. This makes sense because Ric Flair is about to go in the ring and defend the NWA World Separate Championship against a legitimate psycho. He's a psychopath, isn't he? Because uh, when your man Terry Funk comes out after we've got half an hour of Jim and Bob well they like, they take, take the ring apart Bobo but take, they take rid of the cage like how much security has the Funker got oh it's amazing it's, there's it's, about 20 guys come up with him with his fucking cattle prod and whatnot. because he's a dangerous man he's a very dangerous man 
He will fuck you up. Old and crazy. <laughs> Never change Terry Funk. Never change like, Terry Funk. Funk comes out with security. Ric Flair comes out with the ladies. Yeah, I was like, you're a huge pop for Flair as four women come from out of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. I don't think they were there. I think they just appeared. You know they just appeared. They, were, they, they weren't even supposed to be there. Do you think Ric Flair's got the ability to just summon women from the ground? Yeah, like Pokemon. <laughs> you know, just like, oh. It's like, I choose you. Ho over there, I choose you. Ho over there, I choose you too. Ho over yeah. there, actually, oh, you, come here. Bang straight out. And and they just, they, they go, and it's... It, it, this is how long is this? Like quarter of an hour of chaos, pure um, unadulterated this chaos. Is, this match is seventeen minutes twenty three seconds uh, of I've, just pure chaos, pure blood, violence, sweat. It is tears. brilliant. It's amazing. Like they they start outside, Funk's going nuts in the crowd. They can't even <laughs> yeah. pick a ring to start in. They're just like going through both. <laughs> really, of them. I was going to say they brawl in the aisle. Funky's looking for a weapon. Uh, yeah. Fighting a load the of chops the outside again. Yep. Yeah. Flair battered against the ring post. They tumble after a suplex over the apron. Uh, Flair uh, rakes the eyes. Punk, funk pokes the eyes. Oh, that's a, that's a Freudian slip right yeah, there. Uh, punk, Funky punk. Funk. And then Flair backdrop over the rope. It's, it's just nuts. Flair twists Funk's neck, then running yeah. knee to the back of Funk's head. <laughs> then a couple of pile drivers. A couple of pile drivers, and mm-hmm. again, yes. And uh, Funk tries to uh, vanish off down the aisle. Uh, funk uses the branding iron behind the ref back. Yeah. So yeah, Flair's reading. Yeah, see, so Flair gets busted open from the cattle prod. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Question mark. Funk pile driver for two. Uh, Flair's foot's on the ropes, though. Yeah. No, no victory there. Sorry, no. Funker. Uh, by, Funk... by, this, by this point, the blood bank have had a call because, well, there's about three plates of blood in the ring. Yes. Yeah, all is there. We've got the mats that could be ripped up from the floor next. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the ref actually pulls Terry Funk's hair to get off it, get him <laughs> Flair at one point. <laughs> Grabs are really bad, isn't he? Um, yeah. So and there's a funk neck breaker twice, three times. Yeah, which uh, completely silences the crowd because the whole much, thing yeah. isn't he talking about like how Ric Flair's got like a dodgy neck or something? Yeah, I think it was yeah, cut that's off. That's why he kind of keeps going for the neck and keeps trying to break it. Yep, pretty yep. much. Psychology. Uh, Psychology. Uh, Flair goes for the figure four. Funk rolls him up, but then Flair reverses that for the three count. Yeah, it's and it bang was, uh, out of nowhere. Yep, done. Once again, another result that seems to just not really build to anything, but it looks like it's a legit... But it kind of fits in with it, because the match is so, like, staccato, and so just yep. stuff happening. that like, it, it makes sense in the context of the match, that that kind of thing, how it would be how it would finish. The way I interpret it as, Rick Flair's wanted to get the heck out of the ring, so he saw his opening, he took it, he got out. Yeah, but but is he going to get out of the ring, though, Ewan? Is oh. he? Oh, we're about to get into the other ring. <laughs> we, oh, yeah, he's going to go into the other ring by mistake. No, the M- Muta comes out. We've got some green mist. Yay! Yay! More Muta being mental. <laughs> Both just, yeah, just go mental. Just messing up Flair. Out comes Sting, because why not? Sure. Just fists, just p- uh, going everywhere, punching fools left, right, Jim, centre. Jim Ross's voice finally broke. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to catch up, don't know what's going on. Jim, uh, Jim Ross is still trying to give an update on the US TV title that, that Lex Luger lost earlier. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. I understand that the television championship has been held up due to controversy, and, they, and we're going to have an inquest or an a, a, a investigation on that, Bob. If they, and then a cut to a live shot of Lex Luger looking for the title. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. This this pay per view this entire show that does after this match end in possibly one of the most chaotic set of circumstances. It's, just, you got it's Funk, almost bordering on comical. How <laughs> they're just like go out the ring. Talk. Funk will just walk up, start fighting. They walk off again. They'll come yeah. back. Flair, you know, Muta tries to throw the steps over the rope. Flair goes off into the aisle after Muta and Funk. Yeah. Um, Flair and Muta uh, nearly knock Jr. down. <laughs> anyway, they're yeah. still fighting in the background as Jr. and. Um, <laughs> Other Bob dudes, up. yeah, he's trying to, they're trying to sign off the whole show, and they're Bob still like this massive to get this off the air. <laughs> Brandon um, Irons are flying around. Ric Flair comes out and gives like a massive, awesome promo. Yeah, I've got a, my last line of my notes is Flair is interviewed, and it does look like something out of Apocalypse Now. <laughs> now the bottom line is, Terry Funk, we just started, pal. We just got warmed up after two and a half months. I'm just breaking a good sweat. So wherever it is, and pal, 
It'll be again soon. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna dog you until I wear your Texas ass out. Woo! I swear, I have I have such a vivid memory of Ric Flair like this from a. Oh, what was the one that used to wear on ITV? The, the WCW show that used to wear uh, on ITV? Worldwide. Worldwide. Whatever it was, yeah. I swear, it wasn't the match. I think it was just this promo. But, like, I just a clear picture of Ric Flair. Like, half his face in red, half his face in green because of the mist. Just going nuts with the promo. And that's the first time I remember seeing Ric Flair. I'm sure Jesus. it is. <laughs> and just be like, what the hell? is? What is this? Yeah. And that's where I kind of, like... Because it... Being like a like an English wrestling fan, you didn't really know who Ric Flair was until he landed in the company in like ninety two, ninety one. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, 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 yeah. I had no idea who he was. So it was really kind of through bits like this you kind of snatched through the WCW show that was on ITV to replace the British wrestling. Yeah, any yeah. kind of clue who he was, and like I've just got that image in my head of Ric Flair just like just spill flying out of his mouth, blood down one side, green down one side. I'm like, what the hell happened in that match? Yeah, but I don't know if because I'm sure the backgrounds like in. Like uh, like backstage rather than inside the crowd, but it's so long ago I can't remember for definite. But I think that's this is like the first time I saw Ric Flair through that other show. But it's such a bonkers match. It feels like um, like a lot. Remember like the Attitude Era matches, just kind of like the the Austin main events, just kind of started and just kind of rolled around the whole ring area. Like I'm kind of thinking that one year with Dude Love, um, I can't remember, oh, Judgment that? Day one. Yeah, he's like corporate dude love with his like teacher. Yeah, Judgment kind of, Day ninety eight. Uh, yeah. yeah, well they they just kind of like they just kind of start, but they can't be contained by the ring. They just go everywhere. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just it's just nuts. It's just this is what this feels like. It's just like they they don't even start on the ring. They go over there. They're over there. Two rings isn't enough at this stage for them. They need four, I think, at some points. No, don't encourage them. But it's like Funk and Flair are brilliant, though, aren't they? Like the oh, whole yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. think it's, it's hard for them to have a bad match whole thing's yeah. fantastic and the whole thing all this spill out to sort of sting and flare and mute her yeah. and uh, it's and kind it of could, combining those two together it could be like really unfocused like all this stuff happening like it could just mean the match is unfocused but they still kind of keep going back to the psychology of funk trying to go after flair's neck yeah yep and flair just trying to survive and both of them are good enough to carry off even though it's, it's just insane at some point at points it's just ridiculous from there i said looking in it's just a chaotic bloody mess but if you're paying attention there's so much there yeah as well as a chaotic bloody mess. Oh well, yeah, oh, yeah, true, true, true. But uh, that was the glory days. That was glory days. The Great American Bash, nineteen eighty nine, which was uh, we probably should have said at the uh, entire top of the show. Was it July the twenty third? Uh, sure, let's go. July twenty third, nineteen eighty nine, from the Baltimore Arena in Baltimore, Maryland. Yes, yay. So, um, I I enjoyed it. I. It was a crappy start. It was no crappy doesn't cover it. It was a terrible start. But, <laughs> but by I think the end, I was varsity club onwards. It improves. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's when I realised I was watching wrestling and not Bumblefox, whatever this was. I don't know. <laughs> it was bad. I didn't know what Bumblefox was either. I was just <laughs> going, I don't know where we going with that one. But the point is, it wasn't great. No, but here's the important question: Where is it going? Oh. Ooh. This is always the bit where I can't remember where the hell our actual league right. team. Why? Is. Why is the, why is the table not in the slack? Come on! If I if I go into I've got I've got it on my phone the highest WCW rep pay per view is number fourteen for Halloween Havoc nineteen ninety six. Well, I think it's going to surpass Ooh. that. Slightly. I think it's better than that. Yeah, better than that. <laughs> where Next goes one up is WrestleMania that? five. Ooh. Oh, good job Al's not here. Yeah. yeah. Is it better than WrestleMania five? No, because the first half of the card's so atrocious. Ah, oh, yeah, but it's it's the, the end. The, the final sort of half is is. Uh, still, you're just you can't. You makes can't, up for it. Uh, what's after WrestleMania five? Royal Rumble eighty nine, right? 12. And then it's SummerSlam uh, ninety three. Oh, it's a difficult one. It's a That's tricky a one, isn't it? Yeah. World War three. Did that have oh. the uh, the uh, other um, World War three of the other. That's the triple ring one, yeah. Yeah. What am I thinking of? The other uh, war games. Was that in World War Three? No, that no. was at... Um, Starcade 91. Uh, yeah, Starcade 91. Was it not? No, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Words are hard. It's, it's, uh, it's, the, not gonna crack, it's not cracking the top ten. I can tell you that right now. Okay. 
Well then, if it's not as good as if it's not better than WrestleMania five, then it's number then it's the fourteenth best pay per view of all time. <laughs> we'll have to go with that then, won't we? Yeah, I think yeah. so. So it means the WCW pay per view has not cracked the top thirteen of the list. <laughs> Do you not think though that that's because we approach a lot of the WCW stuff with like without the nostalgia side of it? It could Possibly. be that, yes, or it could just be WCW was absolutely fucking terrible. Ooh, he's harsh. He's harsh. He's I'm too not, harsh. I am not harsh at all. I could be a lot harsher. It's, it's like the two rings, the over, the overbooking of the opening bit, the uh, the terrible match after that. <sighs> I don't think it is better than WrestleMania 5. No. But it's better than Halloween Havoc 96. No, it's better than Halloween. Yeah, I've got more. It's, it's admittedly a low bar, but it yeah. does succeed. I feel really bad because we haven't, like, WCW pay views do not get a good, get not, I think, I don't know if we do good, bad ones or what, but they don't seem to go up very high on our list. Well, as I was saying, I picked this mainly because it was allegedly one of the uh, the best WCW yeah. examples. Of, I can see why. And it's, yes, it's far yeah. from being a bad pay But if, if the entire, if, if the quality of the first, like the second half was on the first half, then it would be, it would be amazing. Hmm. Yep. You know, but it's sadly a bit lacking in that department. Exactly. <laughs> and it also, it also houses a Jim Cornette versus James, yeah, <laughs> a Jim Cornette versus Bolly Dane. That's got to drag it down several places, really, hasn't it? Yeah. Yep. But there we go. So there you go. Obvious question. Yes. Where are we going next? Well, I think that's in my hands. I believe it's in your hands. I think it is, Ewan, yes. And I am going to throw out one of the patented Ewan Taylor wild cards here. Oh, boy. What did this gain us last time? Uh, this gain us WrestleMania 8 in Tokyo Dome. WrestleMania 8 in Tokyo Dome? Oh, Jesus, no. That was, that was <laughs> That'd be amazing. Oh, WrestleMania in Tokyo Dome would be amazing. In Tokyo Dome! <laughs> <laughs> You've got to say it right, I'm sorry. This is true. I'm totally distracted there. Savage Randy! <laughs> <laughs> Savage Sam! Oh, God. Oh, that sounds like we need to redub the entire WrestleMania 8. That would be amazing. <laughs> it's Donkey Hunter! That's how he says it. That is how he goddamn well says it. It does say that. Papa yeah. Shango. <laughs> oh, oh okay. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if instead of like you know making Papa Shango like some kind of voodoo guy, they made him like some kind of Japanese demon fellow? That'll be the best thing. Oh, oh God, if he was one of the, the vampires that hop around the place. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, that'd be amazing. Oh, God. Oh, my God. That'd be incredible. So. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I'm talking, I don't. No. After that slip. <laughs> Jesus. I'm sorry. You had nothing you can say now for the next paper is going to be as good as WrestleMania 8 in Tokyo. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know sorry. how I managed to do that. <laughs> If only we could do that as a T-shirt without oh, being just, just, mercilessly from two well, sides. It's just in an, 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 an alternative reality that happened. That happened. It, yeah. You know, it'd just be amazing. We should do that in Fire Pro. We should make oh WrestleMania 8 Tokyo Dome. In Tokyo Dome. Tokyo Dome. Could you, could you imagine the entrance Vince would have for himself coming down the ring with that swagger? Uh, I don't think Vince said an entrance in WrestleMania 8, though, did he? Oh, he went up for this one. Yeah, he went up for this one. Yeah, can you imagine? Oh, man. Can you imagine? <laughs> Okay, so so where we're going now? Now, as we, we know, now? as we know, the Ewan Taylor World Card could be anything and everything. Right? <laughs> Generally, it's not from the past because sometimes the Ewan Taylor Card goes all directions. It goes any direction it wants to go to, baby. So this show was obviously built around the main event of the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Now. There was a time, there was a period of time where this belt meant absolutely nothing, and essentially mm-hmm. the belt would be won by whichever territory basically pulled up the most money. It was basically a title that was bought by the promotion and then wheeled it around in front of two people at a barn somewhere in Texas. But in recent times, through a lot of effort, the NWA belt has become somewhat well known again and somewhat well respected again. So I thought we would take us to last year. Okay. I thought we would take us to the Sears Center in Chicago. Ooh. 
September the 1st. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going all in. (gasps) Super kick party! We are going to the Genesis of... (laughs) Jesus. We are going to the Genesis of... (laughs) Every pay-per-view is now in Tokyo Dome! Everything. Last night, it was a great American bash in Tokyo Dome! Uh, I'm glad I've started something. (laughs) But yes, we are going to the... That'll be the t-shirt, just in Tokyo (laughs) Dome! Great. Jesus. That goes my hero. (laughs) He's, he's a wonderful man. Oh, he's, he's probably paid an abuse and spit. Anyway, um, <laughs> so we are going to basically to the genesis of All Elite Wrestling, and yeah. the NW World Heavyweight title was defended on this very show. So there, mm. is, a, there is a link. Cool. So, yeah, I just thought we'd do something a little bit different and maybe watch something that isn't utterly terrible for the first half. Basically, right. you want to see a load of cocks walking out onto a stage. I That's... don't need to see what Spoilers. Watch that. I could just go outside. Um, shall I tell you, like, two points about this? Mm-hmm. Uh, sure. First one, uh, I'm going to have to get my New Japan subscription uh, working no, in order to watch this. No, you won't. Why? Daddy Ian will take care of you with that. All right, okay. Oh, that, that doesn't because sound like I was, a good I was thing, on the verge of cancelling my New Japan subscription because I tried to watch Wrestle Kingdom, and for some reason, my Chromecast, the, the app on my mobile phone for New Japan wasn't having any of it and wasn't allowing me to sign in. All right. And then when I tried to run it off my laptop, it kept freezing every three seconds. Right. right. What I'll say to you, Cameron, is check the Slack because there, there are there are um, ways and sources. means. There are sources there. Sources there are there. There are ways there. and means, son. Ways also, means. Also, we the pre-match over budget battle royal, which is a fantastic name for a battle royal that uh, takes place in one ring. Yes, is, uh, is the, as it should be. As it should be, is the sanctity of wrestling should be in a square ring, and one ring only. Not this fucking hexagonal, octagonal, upside down double ring wrong, bollocks, double ring bullshit festival. And basically, this entire show was a celebration of what independent wrestling was and obviously was the genesis of what we now know as all elite wrestling true 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 so i sounds interesting i thought we'd watch this for a wee change can i yeah. read a prepared statement from mr milburn is it the words we didn't even say he wasn't here did we well no we didn't even say he wasn't here to be fair, no one was here. eating during the show so i think people would have worked it out because he, he he basically said that he would he, uh, he asked us to tell him when we were going to record so, so we're recording friday night uh-huh. he said, oh, i might join you I was like, have you watched the show? No. Have you watched the Great no. American Bash? No. no. Then what possibly can you bring to this? Sarcasm. So then I'm kind of, I, I did kind of mention to uh, to Al Ewan that you might be picking All In. Right. And after I'd explained what All In was to him... Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, explained it. Uh, sit down, Al. Let me tell you about modern wrestling. Let me tell you about Cody Rhodes. And uh, <laughs> he went, um, no, I'm not doing that shit. Oh, so he's basically decided that we're, we're, it's against the entire the what was it that he said? It's against the entire spirit of what conquistadors should be. Can you can you send the, can you send a prepared statement to Al on my behalf, please, Cameron? Go on, go on. Uh, it's, it's just going to be three words: suck my dick. In oh, Tokyo Dome. <laughs> add, oh, add that to the end, Cam. Yeah, add that to the end. How many? How many? Oh, in the middle of the auditions, oh. really loudly. How many O's you do you want to film? <laughs> At <laughs> least 17. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Can you please just start like saying that loudly to him at all times? All right, okay, I will do. I'll just get really, really confused. I'll see you at workout. It's Donkey on Dome! Should we go for the all day, all day breakfast like, in the pub? It's Donkey on Dome! <laughs> He's probably going to ask me tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's first question he'll ask me is, you know, like, where are Mr. Smith's contact lenses? And I'll have to turn around and say, In Tokyo <laughs> If you do that and record it, I will be for every Please, hero. please do that. Please. Yeah. <laughs> well, just all day, just with Al, but he asks yeah. where things are. In Tokyo <sighs> Oh, God. Oh, man. Yeah, it's great, yeah. it's like... Just you'll be laughing and everyone else will be stood there in confusion. Everyone else will just be <laughs> again on. thinking that I'm nuts. I, I, you're just, I, I you're just there have... pissing yourself laughing. Like, That's so funny. <laughs> Cameron, I've got a way that Al might watch this show. What? Oh no, why? What? If you gonna... tell him that Glacier's in involved at some point. Oh Christ, that that might do actually, I'll see. Might entice him, might entice him in. 
Yeah, but Jeffy, who else? Uh, his... nah, nah, you'd have to say Hercules. That's the only no, way that no, would no, have to no. Jeff Jarrett's there as well. Powers of Pain, that'll get him in. Lanny Poffel's there as well. Oh, Christ. Oh, my. I realise uh, that. I won't give away where, how he's involved, but when you see it, it'll make complete sense. Oh, okay. That is something to look forward to. It is. Now, so... when we record this next episode in 2022 and the ads <laughs> have taken over... <laughs> hey! Hey! I'm sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll be back quicker next time, because, you know... It would be difficult to be back quicker than last time. I think, it, I think it was just the fact that, like, you know, we recorded last in October, and then that episode came out about November, and then by the time we were sort of thinking about recording this one, it was Christmas. It was Christmas. That, that probably did it, yeah. And then January's kind of came and went, and yeah. now here we are the 1st of February, which is probably like the new... You know, it takes us a, lot, a sort of a month to get our stuff together. We, we, yeah. have, we have very busy schedules. Uh, we, yeah, we, 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 we do. don't. You and let's be honest with ourselves. We don't. We're just all inherently lazy. Pretty much. Yeah. I didn't want to say that out loud, but in the, on the show, but you've said it now. So I said it. I'm yeah. sorry. Well, I'll, I'll put it on a t-shirt. We're we're just inherently lazy. There you go. I'm in just... Tokyo Dome. <laughs> Jesus. Well, I'm going to see Pack in April. Sadly, not the Tokyo Dome, but um, I'm <laughs> I love the fact we didn't talk because, like, I think between this last show, Pack's come back, hasn't he? <laughs> Yes, Pac is and back. He is, yeah. Doesn't his, um, his, um, he update in his Twitter just say, Bastard? Yep, he is known as the Bastard. That's, he's how, he's, that's how he's known, he's known as the Bastard Pac. Yeah. Uh, I think Brilliant. I watched it was the, at a fire wrestling show he came out and literally the announcer, the ring announcer announced him, he is the Bastard Pac. I thought, I love Pac. <laughs> Brilliant. Yep. Because that was in Newcastle the, um, on the Defiant Show, wasn't it? Was it was Newcastle as well, so in a, yep. in a Newcastle accent. He's a, ba- no, was, he's a bastard pack, I thought. Yes. <laughs> the bastard pack. <laughs> like when he came out at um, uh, the All In press conference, just that, that tone he has to his promos as a hero is so brilliant. No, he didn't just come out at the All In press conference, he came out in full gear. <laughs> yeah. At least someone said like, he had a match like the day before, so he just basically just like left the ring and walked there without changing his gear. Yeah. <laughs> he, he won He won the Open the Dream Gate Championship at Dragon Gate, got on a flight not showering, and went straight to... Um, just, walked, just Florida, and just, you know, walked, Florida. just walked out of the stadium. All right, all right yeah, bastards. And oh. there he was. Oh. What a man. What a man. He's a man. He's he a is. Man. Thank God he's leaving. And he's all in, isn't he? He's all in, yes. He has got a deal. And I think a few other people might have a deal shortly as well, because apparently the WWE is the sinking ship at the moment. Um, well, what, Hideo Am- Itami's? Itami's gone. Ambrose yeah, is that, that, leaving. I feel a bit sad for Itami, because like he was the first wave of NXT people coming in, of like the kind of real big yep. names. Then he got and then they had that shoulder injury that kind of laid them out for like a whole year, and they just, just completely disrupted his all. But, but don't worry, they're swap they're, they're swapping him out, and, and a free transfer Kushida's coming to WWE. So I'll take that. Why not? Why? Because he's just going to be in some on two hundred five live and playing in front of eight people. He might, you know, you know they hopefully he will make it. A bit <laughs> no, more. he won't. He won't because he's good. He they doesn't... do have a habit of completely wrecking anyone who comes. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just want to be positive because you know why. Because I, I quite like whenever I see a two hundred five live match, I really like it. Like the yeah, one at the Rumble was really. Shall, good. Everyone does. The problem is no one watches two hundred five live. Yeah, like Buddy Murphy as a champion is really good. I Again, like nine, nine to nine out of a hundred people wouldn't know that. I know, I know, but it would, you know. See, I used be like, to be. I used to be Phil. I used to be positive. I used to think everything is great. Then one day, I just completely gave up, and my life has been happier. Well, agree to disagree. No. I it is. It is. It. it could be good, and it is good, and it is you know it's wrestling that's good to watch. So I like watching it. I, I think we've established we all love watching wrestling. That's why we do this. I think we do watch wrestling in Tokyo Dome. Actually, I did oh, in January. <laughs> I did recently. It was quite good. It's going to be really hard not to call this episode in Tokyo Dome now. You should just call it in Tokyo Dome. Why not? I did I'll it. Now reading the podcast in Tokyo Dome. Oh my god! Don't do that. No, you'll, you'll, you'll really well make Al upset. I won't do that. I'll have to buy new domains and all sorts. I'm not going to get around to that. No, just, 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 just change it and don't change anything else. See if anyone picks up on it. <laughs> yeah, no fucker will notice. Anyway. There's a challenge for you. So that's the next time is we're going all in. We are going all in. And then well, after that, I think it's going to be Al's, a round table. Al's all out. <laughs> yeah, Al's well, all out. Not, that's not what I hear. Well, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we'll be back in in less than three months. Yeah, all going well. Yes, all we should, hopefully. 
We'll try to get this out to you short. Uh, try to get out to yeah. you shorter. Good English, you in. Well done. Well done. In Tokyo I'll, Dome! I'll, 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 do, <laughs> I'll do good editing and get be a good boy and get it out quick and then we can record the next one. No, yes. we'll record the next one and we'll build up a bit of momentum for 2019. Yes. Yes, 2019 will be the year. There'll be more than two shows. Yeah, because yes. we've been doing this, what, we've been doing this how long now? What, four years? Too long. We've <laughs> been doing Conquista Boris for? Um... Uh, we? uh, we've been doing it for a period of time oh before yeah. we go we should probably talk about the fact that myself Cameron Al and our friend Lisa recently met well I say recently in December went to ICW and it was rather good I enjoyed that yeah the, yeah, the Fear and Loathing uh, show was really really cool it was the now, the now uh, annual event of the Conquistables meetup <laughs> Yep. The Conquista Boys meetup doesn't actually... I mean, we were we were entertaining the idea of just referring to Lisa as Phil all night. <laughs> <laughs> just to see how she reacted to that. We actually seriously discussed just sticking, you know, just filming it on our mobile phones and just having to just call her Phil. Just, yeah. uh, pretend I'm, just pretend I'm there. I'll just be at home crying because I can't afford flights. Oh, Jesus. Just, <sighs> you know, just get yourself up. It's great. <laughs> it, was, it was good fun. You pay for my tickets and board. Fine. Fine. So you, you can sleep will... in. You can sleep in the cream with Al. I don't want to sleep in the cream with Al. Yes, thirty you quid do. for the hotel. Uh, what is it? Thirty quid for the hotel. Yeah, it's probably the same again for the ticket. Yeah, probably. So sixty quid. How much is a flight from? Oh, like a hundred. Bristol to Glasgow. Yeah, there and back, a hundred yeah. quid. Probably yeah. Probably so more for, than that, actually, for less than two hundred quid, Phil, you could have a good old night out in the Big. town. When I w- was in Scotland in August and in Inverness, a flight from there to Bristol was about 130. Jesus. How come How come you can fly to bloody Spain for like 20 quid? And then that's... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, I, I don't yeah. know either. Um, yeah. Point is, I'll, I'll try. I'll think about possibly considering trying. How about that? That's fine. Although I don't think it's going to be, the, I don't think you think if you're going to be the hydro this year because I, I don't heard, think it's going to be the hydro. No. Mark Dallas tweeted something out just after the hydro going well. That was fun the year. So I think that was his way of saying it didn't quite sell enough. So we, just, but yeah, they've there. done it for three years, and I think it's just now it just needs to be somewhere else apart. Although you know, this, I'm probably going to get slack for this, but it feels to me these companies progress ICW, all of them have got the WWE affiliation, just to me seem like uh, yes <laughs> to me my dog's so angry he barked for no reason that just was... mentioning the affiliation contract just made <laughs> him bark was, that was just f- fantastic that, see. You know, C- calm com- down barking, there's no Vince, it's fine companies like these could... Listen, NXT UK is a good product. Product we can all enjoy wrestling. It's fine. Calm I down, Barkley. I didn't say it wasn't a good product. You're I don't, good. I talk, What's I don't talk to you. I talk to my dog, not you. Oh, <laughs> calm <laughs> down. Jesus, Christ. listen. They've got Walter now. You like Walter? He's a big German dude. It's fine. Calm down. It's okay. Austrian. Oh, ah, close enough. Oh God. <laughs> there's, there's, there's only one other person in history that's, that everyone confuses for German when they're actually Austrian. Yep, and he was a very nice man until one day he got a bad batch of orange juice. Anyway. <sighs> I don't know what I was saying now. now. I don't know what I was going to say now. It's gone. Wrestling's good, isn't it? Wrestling, wrestling, really is, good. wrestling is good. Um... <laughs> Shall we finish? I think, I, think we we've, I think we finished, yeah. <laughs> I think we, <laughs> we finished ages ago. Oh, no. One Wait. more thing. One more thing. Uh, Jake Hager, former Jack Swagger, is doing his full gimmick in Bellator, and it's wonderful. Yeah, apparently he got permission for it, didn't he, or something? Yeah, he, he, really? got, he got the blessing. He's coming out. He's doing the We The People thing. It's great. But actually legit fighting. Yeah, yeah, actually won as well. Wow. Nice. And then did a promo Better that... Didn't see him punk then. That wouldn't be difficult. <laughs> no, fucking over your friends, you're fucking terrible in the oh, octagon. Don't the whole cult, uh, it just breaks my heart. It does. Although, you know, I do, I do feel, I really do feel bad for Cole because he didn't do anything wrong. He's just a nice man doing his thing. Yeah, he's got Cole in the middle of all that stuff. And his, Who? And his podcast. To bring, it, to bring it back a minute, probably without him, there'd be no war in. Uh, probably not because he was really the, the genesis of it all. He was the genesis of Pro and T's. Pro and T's kind of built the young bucks where they were. Yep. And you know, there you go. It's all, it's the all fact that they kept, cool. all kept, 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 
Yeah, pretty much. If there was no Cocabana, there would be no no independent scene as it is today. Yeah, he's like. Um, I was going to compare him to somebody else in another industry, but I can't think of anybody right now. So, well, he's a guy on another industry who helped it lots. That's who Colt is. Um, that was a terrible metaphor. I don't know where we're going with that. Well, it's very late and I'm tired. That's not an excuse. Well, it's the one you're going to get. Oh. Bye. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Uh, <laughs> good podcast, boys. Yeah, it was a good one, yeah. <clears throat> I enjoyed that. The television championship, we understand, will be investigated. We're going to look at all the angles of the tape. I have no idea. Right now, as it stands, the television championship has been held up.